What's going on everyone, Vindical here, and today I'm going to be talking about strat farming and boosting. Now this was a highly requested video that I've been working really hard to create a complete walkthrough for you guys. This farm is one of the more difficult ones that requires two mages. Now you can dual box this, or if you don't have a second account, just grab a buddy, show him this video, and go learn this amazing farm. To keep the clips clean, my good friend Dedicated is helping me out, so shout out to Dedicated. Now, although this farm takes two mages, it yields anywhere from 200 to 400 gold per hour before splitting the gold, and this can scale even higher depending on what epics drop. So when I was boosting my second account with Dedicated, I was getting anywhere from 100,000 to 140,000 experience per hour. The chance on drops in this farm are absolutely insane. You can get Skull Flame Shield, Mermaid Insignet, Kroll Blade, Recipe for Greater Arcane Elixir, a ton of Rune Cloth, and a bunch of low-end epics in here. First. I'm going to quickly touch on my spec. Then, I'm going to talk about each mage and their role for the pull. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the pulls themselves. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, real quick I want to touch on spec and gear. When it comes to gear, you don't need anything more than dungeon blues. You just want high int and high stam. Spell power does you no good just because you're using blizzard the whole time. When it comes to spec, there's nothing special about my spec. It's just a deep frost spec with improved blizzard. Uh, the only reason I have Winter's Chill in this build is because um, I use this spec to clone a cold farm, like in BRD and in Zulfrak, that type of deal. And it's a hybrid, so I'm not always respecting. Um, frost Warding, you get more out of this talent because you actually use Frost Ward a lot, so you could reflect a Frost spell. Um, one thing that I would suggest changing on this build is Arcane Meditation, and this is if you're learning and you're not comfortable with it yet. Take three points out of here, put two into Improved Mana Shield, one and two arcane resilience, but if you feel like you have the farm down, there's no point. Just go ahead and get that extra mana region. For each pull, each mage will be fulfilling a different role. I call one the pulling mage or the puller, and I call the other the tank. The pulling mage is responsible for successfully pulling every pack, killing the eyes of Nax, being aware of the patrols, aiding the pull in position to where the tank can get to them, all while not dying. The tanking mage is responsible for getting to the puller and casting blizzard before the puller's ice block fades, eating all of the damage the casters throw at them. Lastly, the tank is responsible for the pathing of the entire pull and making sure to LOS the casters. Every pull, each mage will switch roles while the other one's ice block is on cooldown. Let's get into the pulls themselves. So I apologize in advance if the lines are a little bit off. This is me trying to combine a live map and an undead map to make one massive Stratholme map for you guys. For this farm, we will be entering through the side entrance into the undead side. For the first pull, there are five mod packs we will be pulling. The pulling mage will open the gate. Immediately, you will aggro the first pack. Frost Nova of this pack, jump for increased range. Then you will run behind the chapel. You will wait here until Nova falls off. Once the Nova falls off, continue to run around the other side of the chapel. Counterspell the far pack. Start running towards the last two packs and blink. The pack you counterspelled will pull this pack. Fire Blast the right pack and face pull the last. Once you aggro the last pack, ice block immediately. This is the perspective from the pulling mage. When pulling, you want to make sure to have ice armor, frost ward, and your PvP trinket equipped. If you get slowed from the casters in the first pack, just run behind the chapel and let the slow fall off while waiting for their Nova to fall off. Do not waste your trinket on these mobs. When you round the chapel, I just strafe run and counterspell the far pack. When you run towards the last two packs, try and stay to the left a little bit. Don't face pull the other pack. Let the pack that you counterspelled pull them. After your blink, you'll more than likely get slowed by the casters. This is when you use your PvP trinket. Now you don't need a free action potion for this pull, but it does help while learning. Not to mention to have a limited invulnerability potion. This is just in case the tank mage doesn't blizzard in time, so you don't die. Things are a bit different when you're the tank mage for the pull. First off, make sure you stand off a little bit from the gate so when he opens it you're not in combat. I've done this, it doesn't end too well. Since you'll be the one tanking the mobs, make sure to have mage armor instead of ice armor and try and keep frost ward on at all times. You'll want to wait until the pulling mage heads towards the last two packs before you start to move. My recommendation, wait until he blinks before you even open the gate. You don't want to get too close, if you get too close when the pulling mage ice blocks, you'll pull aggro before blizzarding. This will result in a wipe. But you don't want to be too far because you only have about a 10 second window to run and cast your blizzard. As mentioned before, there are a few things that you can do and items you can use to reduce the risk of wiping on these pulls. However, even with these items, 
you can still get unlucky and get put in an unfortunate position. If this happens, have one mage get max range and rank one blizzard twice so that the other mage can either evocate or bandage. With the resource issue taken care of, now we run into the space issue. If this happens, just LOS them behind the chapel and cast rank one blizzard until they are all slowed. Then LOS around the other side of the chapel. Now you have room to max rank and kill all of them. Use this chapel to your advantage and kite them around it. Line of sight is your biggest weapon when a pull spreads out. The second pull has five mod packs. The pulling mage will get into a position where the first two packs are in range of their spells. Cast a rank one frostbolt at the right pack, immediately blizzard to the left. Blink in between the third pack and this pair of ghouls. This will cause them both to face pull. Lastly, counterspell the far pack and ice block. When you are the puller, beware of two elements that change every time. The patrols and the eye of Nax. You want to make sure to time your pulls so the patrol mobs are in a position to get noved with the pack or chain pulled. You do not want them in the path you will be taking. The patrol patchwork horror is special because the range is 10 yards for knockaway. With leeway, this range increases to 13 yards. You want to keep them slowed at all times. The other element that is special is the eye of Nax. You want to immediately kill the eye the moment it appears. I would go as far as to suggest a macro to target and cast fire blast at the eye. If you don't, the eye will spawn two gargoyles, which are ridiculously fast. You can kill the gargoyles no problem, but to reduce the risk of wiping, take care of the eyes. Another tip to help in situations like these is mana gems. Make sure to conjure multiple mana gems for each pull. Pop one immediately when the pull begins. This will replenish some of your mana and start the two minute timer to consume another one. This way, you always have a resource for mana. That way you don't have to use your evocation. Although the third pull only has four packs, this is by far the most difficult pull of this farm. You will either need a free action potion or a frost reflector to complete this pull. The moment the pulling mage opens the gate, they will pop a fat. They will immediately aggro the first pack. Nova this pack, again, jump for increased range. Next, they will fire blast this pack, then counterspell this pack. The fourth pack will face pull, immediately blink to the gate, go inside and ice block. Before beginning this pull, cast Ice Barrier and wait until it is almost ready to be recast. That way you can cast another one immediately after your current one falls off. I suggest getting into the habit of marking the patrols so that they are not in the path that you will be taking when you begin your pull. Do not forget to pop your free action potion or use your frost reflector. However, if you are using a frost reflector and you are about to die before getting to the point where you ice block, use a limited invulnerability potion. When you enter the gate, make sure not to ice block too close to either side. If you ice block too close to the pull side, the tank's blizzard won't hit every mob. Too close to the non-pull side, and when the tank opens the gate, they will aggro the mobs before casting blizzard, which will again result in a wipe. This pull specifically doesn't have a place to LOS the mobs for a while. This creates an issue where the mobs will more than likely spread out. To mitigate this issue, Nova the front runners. Only Nova the front runners. Also, if you are the mage tanking the casters, run away and range the casters. This will cause them to run into the melee mobs. Then run back a little and blizzard all of the mobs at once. Lastly, as shown in the clip labeled bandage slash recovery, if a mage is low on health and is casting blizzard, the other mage can bandage the mage that is low on health. If needed, the mage getting bandaged can cast another blizzard. For the fourth pull, there are seven mob packs. The pulling mage will move into a position where the edge of their blizzard hits the far pack. After casting Blizzard, they will run to the other side of the square. The first pack will pull these two packs. Rank 1 Fireball this pack, and Fire Blast this one. Counterspell the farthest pack, and the near pack will face pull. Ice block immediately. If you're pulling the fourth pull and there are still patrols running around, make sure to pick them up. Even though there are 7 mob packs in this pull, you have a lot of time and room to work with. After the initial Blizzard, the caster should die extremely quick due to there being two corners to LOS them on at the beginning of the pull. A major problem I see with mages who try and AoE farm together is they don't take the same path in. Pick rally points along the route to make sure that you and your farming partner are going in the same direction. That way the mobs stay in one large pack. Although there are 7 mob packs, you do not have to pull the 7th. There is a chance that you can pull a carrier. If this happens, you're gonna die. You can't kill him, you can't outrun him, it's faster to just die and run back. He doesn't aggro most of the time, however, every now and again you will get unlucky. This is for you to decide if you want to pull the last mob pack or not. Pull at your own risk. 
Make sure that Blizzard has an uptime near 100%. You do not want these mobs getting loose. Lastly, if you place the center of your Blizz past a corner, you can Blizzard around that corner. This will allow you to utilize Blizzard to its fullest potential at all times, even when mobs are LOS'd. The last pull has five mob packs. The pulling mage will face pull the first pack. Nova immediately. Again, jump for increased range. Fire blast this pack and run the other direction around the Nova mobs. Blink through this pack. This will face pull these two. Then counterspell these ghouls. Ice block immediately. This last pull is more of a bonus pull. You get more experience for the specific run, but when it comes to experience per hour, you get more by skipping this pull. If you're boosting someone, they can stay in between the gates back where you stage for the third pull. They will still get experience from this location. Be cautious of the rats in the gated area before this bonus pull. In closing, some tips I'd like to leave you with is, if you happen to pull a citizen, you can make a macro to slash dance with them and keep them stun locked with slash dance while you kill other mobs or even them. Also, when you first enter strat and you want to know if Skull has spawned, if you stare at the wall and slash target Skull, you can't target him. However, if you use an ornate spyglass made from engineering, you can stare at the wall towards where he spawns and slash target Skull, and because your render distance is increased, you will target him if he's in that lockout. If you happen to have Skull and he's in your pulls and you're having trouble killing him, you can use a greater frost protection potion against him. They are relatively cheap on the auction house. The last tip I have is to use strat holy water, which can be looted from the crates in strat. If you are worried about it being a trap crate or not, a secret is go really close but not on top of the crate, and if it says require disarm trap, it's a fake. If it doesn't, you can go the rest of the distance and open the crate. And on top of the holy water, you get quite a bit of potions that you can use to help you farm. Well that's it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, it really does help out the channel. Anyways, this is Vendy, I'm out, peace.